I'll never forget like three years, I think three-ish conferences ago. First night of conference, you want it to go off without a hitch and you kind of have those preconceived ideas in your head of like how perfect it has to be. And Henry from the stage stops everything like after worship and actually has all of the production guys come to the front of the stage. <laughs> like I was mixing, like I was at front of house and had to leave and go down to the front of the stage. All of us, camera ops, the whole team, like all the creative, the people who had sewn all week and were tired into doing conference, we went up to the front and just he prayed over us and encouraged us. And we just had a moment where we got to experience the power and the presence of God and got to disconnect for a second and just have a moment to encounter. That will never be erased from my memory because of the precedent that it kind of set for the rest of the weekend. Our whole goal is not to make some grandeur thing. It's all worship, like we wanna do, we wanna bring excellence, but it's not a standard of perfection. That's kind of in our mantra as a church, like presence over presentation, intimacy over industry. I, I love phrases like that, encounter over entertainment, like things that in a production world are so usually focused on the second part of that phrase, but it's the, the first part of that that is so the heart of our church. and and really should be the heart of us as worship leaders and as, as worship verse. Welcome back to another episode of Worship Tech Tour featuring The Belonging Co. In this episode, we're taking an in-depth look at the audio systems they're using at this church. What are the goals of a worship audio system? Well, first, it needs to provide live sound reinforcement for people who are present in the auditorium. Second, it needs to provide a high quality mix for their live stream. And then third, it needs to also provide a way to easily capture data like multi-track recordings that they can later edit and mix down in post-production for things like worship albums or YouTube videos. So what we'll do in this video is we're gonna break the audio system down into the essential building blocks, starting at the source. First, we'll talk about audio capture. Next, we'll move on to audio routing, how they get audio from one place to another. Then we're gonna cover their mixing solutions. First, in the auditorium, the consoles they're using for both their front of house mix and monitor mix. And then we'll talk about the PA system that they're using, speakers, sub first fills. Next, we'll move on to the broadcast mix room where they have a completely separate mix they're able to produce for their online viewers. Finally, we'll take a look at their audio team, who are their mix engineers, and how they are able to just have a consistent, high quality mix from week to week. Our tour guide for this episode is Brenton Miles. He is the one who is in charge of all things audio at The Belonging Co. He's also the front of house engineer for Carrie Job. Before we dive in, I wanna remind you to check out the resources down below this video, especially our worship ministry toolkit, if you're looking for the best gear and software to implement in your church. The first step to any audio system is capturing quality audio at the source. It's also worth noting that when The Belonging Co. built their new campus, they invested quite a bit into acoustically treating the room. So when you walk in the auditorium, you will see a bunch of absorption panels all around the room. That way, the sound coming out of their speakers isn't bouncing around, creating all sorts of strange reflections, and then also feeding back into microphones on stage. So I want to remind you that acoustic treatment is very important when you're building a system from scratch and they put a lot of time and attention into this process with their integration company when they built this space. So now let's do a rundown of the microphones and other gear they're using to capture high quality audio on stage. This is the audio being produced by musicians, worship leaders, and communicators. First, let's take a look at the drummer. He is using a C&C drum set with shy baffles. Those baffles help reduce the cymbal bleed uh, from going into the vocal mics on stage. On the kick drum, they are using two microphones. On the outside is an Audix D6, and then on the inside of the kick drum is the Shure Beta 91. On the snare drum, they are using two SM57 microphones, one on top and one on bottom. For toms, they are using the Sennheiser 904S microphones that clip right on the edge of the toms. For overhead mics, they are using the AKG 414s. 
Moving on to Guitar World, they have stereo guitar amplifier setups backstage. Very soon, they're going to be putting those amps in isolation cabinets. And they are miking all these amplifiers with Shure SM57s. Most of the time, guitarists will bring their own amplifiers. And then for bass guitars and acoustic guitar rigs, they are using direct box from any sort of pedal setup that those guitarists have uh, to get the signal to front of house. They are capturing audio from their keyboard and their tracks rig using Focusrite Claret audio interfaces. Vocal microphones are the Shure KSM9s with ULXD wireless systems. Finally, they're using over a dozen crowd microphones. They have some AKG 414s for the front row crowd capture, and then they're also using more AKG 414s suspended from the ceiling right next to the PA speakers. They also have some SM81s by Shure. Then they're also using some shotgun mics by Sennheiser, the 416 shotguns and the 8060 shotguns. It may seem like a lot of microphones for crowd mics, but it really is a game changer for their broadcast mix in being able to capture the energy of the room and that stereo image of the congregation singing along in worship. I also want to mention their talkback microphone setup. Even though this signal is not being sent to any of their main mixes, it's great for their team to be able to communicate to one another. So at front of house, as well as for the music director position uh, in the monitor world position, they're using OptiGate on simple dynamic microphones, uh, which are infrared sensitive uh, gates that will enable or disable a microphone depending on how close you are to it. When the little red light is on, that means the microphone is active. And when the little red light is off, that means it is muted. Now that we've covered audio capture, let's move on to audio routing. So we've got all the sub snakes um, on stage that go underground to our server room. Uh, and directly patch into our SD rack. Um, but there's actually two SD racks, so it's 112 channels of analog I.O. Um, and then since each are on Dante, that gives us like 128 total Dante channels. And then those are converted. So we convert Maddie to Dante with a couple red nets back in the server room. So basically the red nets, depending on the one you get, so you can do uh, the D64R, which is essentially Maddie to Dante and back and forth. We also have an orange box. So that's on the fiber network that also has Dante, which allows us to be able to take Dante back into the actual consoles on the fiber network. When they renovated this building, they wanted to be able to capture audio from pretty much any room in the church. So when you go into different rooms within the building, on the wall, you'll see these panels that have audio inputs that actually send the audio all the way back to the main server room where they have the SD racks. The Digico consoles they use at front of house and monitor world are using the proprietary OptiCore fiber network to get audio to and from those consoles. The server room really is the central hub for all things audio routing. They're sending audio to their broadcast mix room over Dante into the Pro Tools MTRX studio interfaces. So there are a total of four mixing solutions that they're using at a given time to pull off a service for in-person and broadcast. They have the front of house mixing console, they have the monitor world mixing console, they've got the broadcast mixing solution in the broadcast mix room, and then they have one more mixing console, the Digico S21, that is the master control for broadcast audio. Let's take a closer look at the mixing consoles and PA that they're using in the main auditorium. For both front of house and monitor world, they're using the Digico SD10. SD10 has 144 input channels and 64 buses. In love with Digico, we had eights for a long time. Before that, we were on an X32. So we kind of just kind of grown in channel count. The reason we love the tens is the layout and the channel count. The eights were less channel count. Um, and also the macros, the layout's just a little bit more updated, but it's essentially the big brother to the eight, uh, which our volunteers were used to, and it was a very easy kind of lateral move. Um, it also has a place for a laptop, which we're using waves like Super Rack on basically everything. So just to be able to have quick, easy access now that waves isn't on the desk. The nice thing about this desk is you can do like group breakouts pretty, like very easily. So I've actually got, like kick in and out going to a kick comp so I can do processing on like both channels. Same, same with a snare. 
um, I'll put all the keys going through like a stereo group and then that gives me the ability to throw that group in waves and do like things to like all of the keys or all of the tracks. So we've got some like subgroups really built out. Um, with Super Rack, it's kind of like the, uh, there's a network and a waves card in the console that all goes into a switch and then the switch is how it gets, uh, it pulls the computer in and it pulls the server, the Waves server in. So all the DSP for all the Waves plugins live on the server. And then we've actually got um, some Tune and a couple other like off plugins from Waves going through Ableton. And uh, so we're able to, with the A insert and the B insert on the console, we're able to actually send um, into a different DAW outside of Super Rack, um, which allows us to kind of do some shaping of like auto-tune changing, key changing stuff. So we're using Antares in Pro Tools. So it's literally like same settings to where like if, I, if we change keys, the actual plugin is doing the exact same thing on both machines. Um, so the front of house responds the same as broadcast to where, you know, you don't have any of that weird phasing stuff in your crowd mics. Um, and stuff like that. That's kind of when you really push crowd mics and you've got a in-tune vocal and an out-of-tune vocal, it can get really weird and phasey. When you attend a worship gathering at the Belonging Co. in person, to no surprise, you will be blown away by the quality of sound that is coming out of the PA speakers they're using. So let's take a look at that setup. And then in the room, we've got a DMB KSL line array with SL subs and a bunch of side fills, front fills, to kind of supplement the width of the room. Um, we did an A and B test with that, and then we have, an, we have a J-Rig too that we had had at Rocket Town, which is kind of actually, it's a bigger box. The J-Rig is um, now in our kid's space, <laughs> which is kind of amazing. It's a bigger box and a much smaller room. Um, but the, the sound of it is just money. Like the headroom on it is crazy. Um, we tested the KSL against a uh, L Acoustics K2 box. And then we actually tried out the, um, the Elisa system, but it's, it was really cool. And we actually thought that that would be a good fit for this room because it's so wide. And then when we heard the KSL, we just honestly just love DMB. It's like, it's just one of those things with the snare and the vocal clarity that's just kind of like, it's a little more rock and roll, a little more punchy. Um, and it's just kind of sonically kind of what we're going for. Let's move on over to the broadcast mix room. This is probably my favorite room in all of their production suite. It just looks amazing. And then the mix that they're able to produce for their online broadcast sounds amazing. So we're mixing all of our broadcast stuff in Pro Tools, which was kind of a big thing um, when we kind of did this. We were like, we could go the console route, we could go the Pro Tools route. Pro Tools obviously gives you a lot more flexibility with uh, mixing, plugins, all of that. And uh, because we record every service too, just to have it directly in Pro Tools was a priority for us, uh, just to be able to go back quickly and have the session and kind of have a pre-built mix kind of ready to go. Um, so we could go back, fix a couple things, export it, and make it very simple. And just with the flexibility of plugins too, uh, being able to kind of use a lot more than just one or two, you know, companies like Waves or UAD stuff, you've got a plethora of that you, that you can use. Um, so that, that was kind of a priority, I think, for us when we, we started. So getting out of Digico into Pro Tools, we kind of had to navigate how to do that best. And Dante has been a great infrastructure for us across the board because we've got all of our graphics computers. Um, again, we've got a master control. I've got S21 in the, in the broadcast room. So we're able to have someone sit there as a backup plan. If Pro Tools crashes, they can flip, uh, quickly throw front of house mix on. Um, we have hosts at the beginning and end of service so we can take those lines directly into master control. So. Uh, the mix room doesn't have to worry about that. Um, you don't have to mix it in the, in the room. So it just gives us complete isolation in each place, um, but it also gives us the ability to blend where we need to as kind of a backup plan. So again, we're, we're basically taking all of our SD racks to Dante. So in Dante control, then we patch that to the MTRXs, which are those Avid uh, hardware pieces. Um, and then inside of each of those MTRXs, uh, you, you've got 
digital patch that you can do on the computer. So we've basically just gone one to one. Like the way that we've actually designed our sub snakes on stage is the order that we're doing everything kind of across the board to make it easy. One of the the downfalls of Pro Tools is for a stereo input, it's gotta have an odd number first and then an even. So like for overheads, it's gotta be like nine and 10, it can't be 10 and 11. So we've built our sub snakes to kind of reflect that. So we'll do like kick in and out, snare top and bottom, uh, like rack tom, floor tom, overheads. So since it's like seven, eight, nine, or whatever, five, six, seven, eight, and then nine's the hi-hat. So this video hi-hat before that, then it throws everything kind of out of order for stereo patching. Little things like that, it's kind of annoying. You, but with being on Dante, that obviously allows you to be able to change that, like you could do that, but it just gets complicated if it's not one-to-one. -one. Because if I have to have an input list that has a tab for what <laughs> number is in each place, it's kind of complicated. So for me to be able to look at the console and say, this vocal's coming down channel 46, it's gonna be channel 46 for him which is great. And not like, well, I gotta look at the input list and my channel 46 is his channel 35, you know, or whatever. So um, we've kind of built it to be one-to-one, -one, which has been so, so nice. So yeah, and then from there, they each also have analog IO. So like for our monitoring, you know, all of that can happen directly off of those. We've got the little grace controller. Physically, we're using the S1 Abbott's. We were thinking about like the S3, but the S3 only has 16 faders, and I don't think you can daisy chain them. Um, and so with the S1s, they're eight, but you can do, like, we've got four of them. And then iPads, so we've got visual reference for each of them, um, which is great for metering um, and just having actual touch faders. And those are all custom built, which is kind of cool. So you can, um, we've built a lot of our Pro Tools rig on VCAs just so that we can have 32 faders and then anything outside of those 32 faders, we just mix inside of Pro Tools. But it, most of the stuff that's having to change a lot is on a fader, which is great. So like all the vocals and like each, each guitar is one fader and not two for stereo, like stuff like that. So kind of breaks it up a little bit easier. And then yeah, we've got the, the Focals. Um, we had a guy named Josh Niles come and do the acoustic treatment in the room. It's like obviously a kind of a narrow, rectangular rectangular room, which isn't ideal for mixing, especially with those big monitors. So he came in and built bass traps, isolation, diffusion, kind of got us to a place that it sounds pretty flat. And then we've got the turn off system to actually curve it all out to make it flat room. So we're building, building on a flat room, which is amazing. Um, and it totally translates. If you're listening on an iPhone or a computer, like it feels very similar to the room we're mixing in, which is, which is awesome. It's all volunteers, so I mean, all of our guys are professionally touring or in a studio, or you know, like they're they're brilliant minds, very great dudes. But they're volunteers, yeah. you know, they volunteer their time and they come and they serve, and they're not, you know, ultra opinionated. And it's it's honestly a dream team. I'm a worship leader, like I'm a musician to start. Like I've always played music and been on the stage. Like that was my whole like yesterday, you know, like that was my past season. Like I encourage worship leaders to hop on a desk all the time or like really great people like keys or tracks guys who are always paying attention to the worship leader and paying attention to the service flow would be great at front of house. But I don't think there has to be a difference between production and worship team. Like it's all one team because we all have to work together. And I kind of approach a console similar to how I would approach a keyboard. Like I'm playing a part in what's happening. It's not like the buck stops here, you know? Like we're all in a place where we're curating an environment for people to encounter the presence of God. Like that's our job as a worship team. That's our job as a production team. And we're trying to get out of the way. We're trying to do our best. We're not trying to show off. We're trying to create an environment for people to feel like they can let loose and just encounter the presence of God. And so if that's the motive, then it will translate. If it's about being seen or being heard or how it you know, makes me look, that's never really a good mindset anyway <laughs> with being involved in church in general. I think to encourage like aspiring mix engineers and audio guys, like just show up and have the heart of serving. That will never fail you. <laughs> You know, like I, I love our church so much because we've got guys who are on The Voice or American Idol or like, you know, 
have done a lot in music and they're out parking cars, you know, or they're in the coffee bar or they're helping in kids and they don't even really want to be on stage. Or when they are, there's an authority that, you know, they carry, but it's because of their heart for just the pursuit of the presence of God and not because of their career. Like the career stuff stops at the door. And I think that's what's been so cool about the people that we have on our team. Um, and it's the same in production world. It's like, we're all just here to serve the house. We're all just here to like encounter God together. Just jump in and serve, get involved and like help curate an environment for people to encounter God. And that will then actually shape and open things in your life that you never knew were there, <laughs> you know? And so that's my story for sure. That wraps up this episode of Worship Tech Tour. Thanks so much for watching. Leave a like if you learned something new today and subscribe so you don't miss out on future episodes that will unpack the rest of the system at The Belonging Co. And I want to remind you to check out The Belonging Co's latest album, See the Light. I'll link that below this video. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Thank you.